Hello, and welcome to this edition of Central Connecticut Now, the program that brings you closer to the people that make news in our region and those that cover them. I'm Mike Schroeder, publisher of the New Britain Herald and Bristol Press, and today my guest is Catherine Shen, our education and uh, city hall reporter in New Britain. Welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, Catherine, you're new, kind of still new. We, uh, Just a month. Jeez. <laughs> Time, time flies when you're having fun. And so, uh, but you've got a background in journalism and uh, pretty much coast to coast, right? I do. I started in California. Yeah. That's where I started my uh, broadcasting and print journalism career. I've been doing it for just over 10 years. Wow. So. And we're, we're certainly happy to have you here in well, thank you very much. beautiful central Connecticut. Yes. And maybe the first thing I should do is first impressions. You only get one chance to have a first impression. Mm -hmm of New Britain and our uh, our city government in particular, especially coming up to the elections mm -hmm. in the next few weeks. And, and uh, what have you noticed? What, what's the difference here between any place else? Well, the first thing that jumped into mind is how much more diverse it is mm. than I expected. I mean, I really had no concept of how Connecticut is like. This is my first foray living here. <laughs> And I was very pleasantly surprised to see how diverse it is. And um, because my, the previous workplace I had, it was not as diverse. Mm. And it's, it's really nice to see different faces, different culture, hearing different languages, actually. It's been, it's been pretty nice on that. Glad to have that. I bet mm -hmm. you uh, Polish wasn't the biggest language in your last stop. No, uh, I'm thinking <laughs> I should probably take up on it soon, but <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, and uh, uh, how about the political system here? I mean, it's very different uh, from what I'm used to. I must be honest. I um, was unaware that aldermen is a thing, a common council is a thing. I'm used to a city council with yeah. five people, no political parties. So that's something that I'm slowly getting used to. But it makes sense. It yeah. Makes sense. But yeah. For the area, huh? For the area, especially. Uh, well, and they're dealing with a lot of different issues here. Mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the, as as a place that is still continuing to transition from a primarily manufacturing and factory environment to a uh, everything from uh, uh, niche manufacturing to uh, now high tech, uh, with some of the things that are going on in the city. Uh, that there is, there's a lot going on here. And um, what do you think some of the issues that you've seen that have, that have taken, that you've seen are uh, the biggest issues that are being dealt with now? I think for a city to want to rise from a previous industry, it's very difficult. I've worked mm -hmm. with cities where they're still struggling by the time I left. So I see, I see the struggles that New Britain may have, but I think in a lot of ways there, it's, there's, there are a lot of steps being taken towards it, but I think the biggest problem is it takes a long time. <laughs> so yeah. it takes a very long time. So you speak of, of high technology, for example. Right. I know Mayor Aaron Stewart has an innovation park project that just broke ground a couple yep. weeks ago. That's a, that's a great project to kind of kickstart it, but once again, it's just one of those things that's going to take years to sort of build up. And, but at least there's something going on. It's, uh, it's, it's, just, it's a lot rougher, I think, than people imagine. So. Well, my understanding in that project, that's at least 10 years for the first phase. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a pretty, big time, pretty big timeline right. for a lot of people to wait on, right. on change. It's kind of like dominoes. Yeah, right? yeah. Get one down, takes a while to build back up. But it is, it is a first step, and that's probably one of the first stories that I've done. And it was a nice one to do just because it's positive and it's getting the city going. There's a lot of energy, literally. So a good thing. Kind of complicated. Slightly. You know, and, <laughs> you know, and, mm -hmm. and a lot of it, I understand, was not, is, is still kind of hidden from the public. Not, not intentionally, but mm -hmm. physically are really, it's like in the center mm -hmm. of the old Stanley right. complex on Myrtle and Curtis. Right, right, right. And so the, a lot of people don't see what's going on, mm -hmm. but there is work going there on. There is work going on, so. Uh, you know, it's not, often there's, there's talk of big plans mm -hmm. that never come to fruition, mm -hmm. but here it appears that there's actually going to be something. Right, right, and that's that's always a nice a nice thing to see. So, uh, the you know we've got an election coming up. Mm 
Uh, what do you see in, and we're still putting together our coverage for the, yes. the election. And I guess the question our voters, uh, the presumptive voters, mm -hmm. are going to be looking at is what are the issues? What are, are you seeing as coming up in the campaigns and uh, what people care about? I think education mm. first. I mean, popped out of my head. That, <laughs> that I mean, helps. I think education is one because it is the foundation of a of a community, and it's always the first area area that people cut funds from. So I think that's that's the challenging part. And it looks like there are a lot of people slash candidates slash community members that are actively working on trying to make it better in a variety of ways. But I think education is number one. And number two is probably finances, mm. as per usual. Yeah, and which is that's not unusual for any city, I believe. The three-letter word. <laughs> right? So education, finances, and I think road safety mm. is another one that I've road been seeing. Road safety. Mm -hmm. That that's mm -hmm. interesting. Is there any kind of particularly focus or any illustrated? Be a lot of infrastructure. Yeah, a lot of in infrastructure potholes always. And <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a perpetual problem. Yeah, there you go. But I, th I think it's just general infrastructure. There are a lot of older streets or older bridges they would like to. And we're to. going into winter now. Right. So it's right. only going to be worse. Yeah, that's something <laughs> I'm looking forward to. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very, you know, I, I found it very interesting when I first came to town was that road work tends to stop when the weather gets cold mm -hmm. because they shut down the blacktop facilities so they don't put out all the the you know the oily mix for the roadways right and so it kind of stops everybody until they have to fill in all the potholes created by the next season right so uh, so uh, we've got three candidates we got three mayoral candidates. Yeah, yeah. We got three mayoral candidates and uh, 30 common council <sighs> candidates. So it's going to be exciting. So that's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, we were talking in an earlier meeting about some of the parties having a hard time filling their slates. Mm. That doesn't seem to be a problem in New Britain. Yeah, that's uh, that's another thing that stood out for me because this is certainly not my first election, yeah. and uh, the enthusiasm that is going into it, it's a lot bigger than I've seen, really. And a lot of people who wants to come out to make a change, it's pretty astonishing. More people want to get involved, younger people want to get involved, which is a pretty, uh, a different thing for me to witness, which is nice. So. I was just going to ask, mm -hmm. do you see a real trend to youth, to mm -hmm. youth yes. in that whole slate? Mm -hmm. I do. I've, I worked in councils where nobody's under a certain age. Yep, right. And I get here and all of a sudden, I, I'm actually seeing my peers who are on the dais and that's a very new view for me. And, and then to see them want to stay or want to come back or want to try it out, it's, a, it's pretty inspiring actually. I think on both sides of the Republican and Democratic uh, aisle there, that a lot of this could be tied to Mayor Stewart. Sure. You know, the, she, it just kind of, uh, when she was elected, I think she was 26 when she was elected, mm -hmm. that, uh, that it kind of changed the, the uh, demographic right. and the interest level right. of, you know, whichever direction you, you, you're on, right. there was kind of an across the board interest from a group that we really hadn't seen before. Right, I think, and I think it goes across political parties, mm -hmm. regardless of what your beliefs are. I think to see someone younger is yep. helpful, and we talk about that all the time, and and whether or not you are voted in, if you win or lose, but you will always have the youth energy, and it, you're really starting to see that more, and it's kind of it's kind of awesome. <laughs> so <laughs> now you see the you, you see coming up that there's you know all these these this group of thirty, mm -hmm. uh, and you've got uh, coming off of a you know I. I uh, Mayor Stewart has been in for three terms, I believe, mm -hmm. and uh, and she most recently had a primarily Democratic uh, Common Council yes. to work with. Mm -hmm. Anybody sh share with you any feelings about which direction the wind will blow this time? 
Not so far. <laughs> not considering there are 15 on each side that are running. <laughs> that might tell you something. I'm not sure what yet. If you know what it is, you can tell yep. me. <laughs> but are all the are all the incumbents running for re-election? No, not okay. all of them. Mm -hmm. So there's so there's even more new mm -hmm. than just the seats that are unfilled. Right. And to write on to earlier's question about younger people, that's another thing that I've been seeing that I haven't really seen is new people coming in, regardless of age, regardless of political party. Yep. So that's. That's a, that's a good thing, I think. Now, in your discussions with some of those candidates, mm -hmm. have you, ha, is, uh, is it really uh, education, finance, mm -hmm. and, and infrastructure? Yeah, it really is. Okay. It really is. There's not, I think that's, that's the major focus for, I think, most candidates, regardless of what their parties are, or, I mean, even, even candidates I spoke to who are running for Board of Education, naturally their, their, sure. uh, their foundation, uh, found, foundational um, issues are going to be education, but it seems to be across the board. Almost every single candidate I've spoken with, that's one of their top priorities. So. Anything, any big ideas that you've come across or any big differences in beyond the generic, we need better uh, comments? Mm -hmm. Uh, in terms of education, or? in any of in any of the areas, when, uh, any specific kinds of things, I'll do this if mm -hmm, I'm elected, mm -hmm. kind of things. Well, I've I've heard there are a lot of candidates who want to focus on infrastructure restoration, and. Um, helping the kids have a better place to learn because mm. if the buildings are falling apart it's really difficult for them to to learn in that kind of space so i think that 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 is one and another is to bring the focus back on teachers mm. because we treat our teachers unfortunately it's not the best mm. so i think there are a handful of candidates that are trying to figure out ways to to better that. Do you think that's an across the board opinion? Absolutely. That, yeah. Absolutely. All the cities I've covered so far, unfortunately. And how about here among the candidates? Do they pretty much agree that we need to do something here? Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess the big always the question is you move from education to the next one, the mm -hmm. finances. Yes. Any plans for financing these improvements? I haven't heard of anything specific in mm. particular, but there are... Probably not an unusual <laughs> situation either. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. But I think uh, it's just ongoing. I think um, it's just on people's minds, especially since it's, uh, it's a struggle for almost every family mm. in, in, the, in the city. Not just New Britain, of course. Yeah. But, but, so it's on the forefront of many people's minds. It'll be interesting to see what people actually want to do specifically mm -hmm. right. to get past this mm -hmm. because this has been an ongoing issue here for the 10 years that I've lived in town right and uh, how do you how do you deal with a, a certain environment mm -hmm. where you've got to you've got to help you, you've got a lot more work to do than you ever had before you know with uh, 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 the things that continually to come come up in the conversation is giving kids a s fair start. Right. You know that they're you know when they go into school that they're prepared for it, mm -hmm. and that they're reading at grade level by usually grade three is usually the 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 milestone that they talk about. But we always seem to be just trying to. Cl run to stay in place mm -hmm. in some ways. Right. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if uh, somebody comes up with some fresh ideas right. that work. Right. <laughs> I mean, I do know there are a lot of ongoing initiatives that uh, they're currently working on. Hopefully they'll start rolling them out next year. But for example, something that can really help the students become interested in their own history is they're bringing in curriculums that focuses on Hispanic history, mm. African American history, black history, Polish history. So kids of that nationality can see history who share their same skin color or same eye shape. And so that's a that's something that the, the school district is currently working on. And the great thing about that is that it's not only uh, people that share that ethnicity or that heritage, mm -hmm that everybody gets to understand that absolutely. this is not just them, right. it's all of us. Mm -hmm. absolutely. And I think we talked prior that this is gonna be a real initiative for the coming year. Yes. And they're coming up with some new uh, 
uh, curriculum to yeah. be able to deal with that. It will be a requirement, I believe, in all public schools. So Th that would be mm -hmm. that would be a real um, step forward for here, where right. we're we are a minority majority mm -hmm. city, and we're only getting that's only going to grow. Right. I believe that we're probably in the high 30s in terms of Hispanic. Uh, 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 population mm -hmm. and the, the things are changing right. and if you haven't if you haven't noticed that yet <laughs> look around that's mm -hmm. what I uh, that's why I tell people when they come to town right. uh, you know not only are we a big Polish core community mm -hmm. you know as we could even talk about a little bit about sure. the coverage of the Polish president sure. in town mm -hmm that really kind of threw us for a loop. We, I think we did a great job in, in, in covering that. I'm a little bit biased, but sure. I'll live with that. <laughs> but the, um, but uh, that was quite a tip of the cap mm -hmm. to our biggest, biggest uh, nationality group, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, and that took a lot of work to do. Yeah, yeah. And it was like a 10 day, 10 day period? It was. Two weeks, something my, like was, that? The weekend. It was my welcome basket. Oh my <laughs> gosh, geez. How long have you been here when, we, when that happened? I think it happened literally like three days after <laughs> I showed up. So, Good, welcome. Yeah. Congratulations and welcome Thank aboard. Here's Thank the you. president of Poland. Exactly. <laughs> no big deal. Well, but that, and that's, the, that's probably our biggest, uh, our, our biggest visitor, mm -hmm. certainly international visitor, that I, that I can recall. Mm -hmm. And uh, was that a lot of work coming in off the street? It was, it was a lot of work, but it, it was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a big deal. It was, it was nice to kind of see how everyone thought about it or yeah. who knew about it and what did they think about it. So <laughs> it's always interesting. <laughs> Gave you an introduction to Broad Street, that's Absolutely. for sure. Yeah, otherwise, uh, take me longer. Well, you know, we can put it on our pitch here that, you know, there's very few papers you've ever seen that had a Polish language section. You're right. Uh, which we do every Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, pick up yours tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> but it's a, uh, you know, it's a real opportunity to be in a different kind of place. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, what do you see as... Uh, some of the things that our viewers could will be able to to uh, see in terms of change in the next year. Where are your kind of uh, antennae focused in those areas? Any kind of specific things aside from the multi-ethnic curriculum mm -hmm. um, that that you see as priorities out there already? Right. In terms of education, I think I think there are there are a lot of ongoing initiatives that really want to focus on helping the teachers have mm. a better environment to teach in as well. It's not just the students. Of course, the students are a priority. Sure. But um, you need to have a good group of people to take care of them. And so, so one thing that I have seen is they want to be able to have more resources to bring in teachers or specialized teachers, social workers mm. to help with special needs students because they do need a special environment and a special professional to come in to when help When you say them. special mm -hmm. needs, mm -hmm. what does that actually mean? I think it goes anywhere from mental illness to uh, behavioral issues. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that's the area that there's a lot of stigma, there's a lot of stereotyping, and I think the district and the state itself, they're working on trying to create a better environment for those students and also for those teachers that teach those students. So and and you know, for a while now, the the preferred method of helping those kids is mainstreaming, getting them in the classrooms, right. do, doing whatever is needed to be done mm -hmm. to make sure that they can grow up with the same kind of resources that every other kid has. Right. I've, I've spoken to teachers about that and it really depends on the student. For some student they respond well, for some student they don't. And it also depends on what their what their inherent issues are. And, and it so. can be across the board. I it, mean right. like you say, it could be very complicated. real aggressive mm -hmm. to almost not being able to uh, to having a hard time anyway right. just understanding what's going on. Mm -hmm. So it's aggressive versus 
almost the total opposite. Right, and which is why uh, the state and the district feels it's vital to have resources to bring in specialized educators who can help with that, because that's not something that, uh, I don't want to say normal, but yeah. an everyday teacher yeah. should have to deal with in their and classroom. That's every, and that happens in almost mm -hmm. every classroom. Right, absolutely. And it's expensive mm -hmm. to be able to provide the resources that make that doable. Right, right. Um, and in New Britain, there's plenty mm -hmm. of kids that need that kind of specialized care. Mm -hmm. We're lucky to have the hospital for special care here that handles a lot of kinds of different things. And now even with a specialty on, uh, on uh, 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 oh, the, the, uh, the uh, Asperger's and mm -hmm. uh, the spectrum there. Right. Uh, the, there's just a lot of need. Mm -hmm. And so we see that. Speaking of needs, we spoke a little bit about your, you covered a, 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 a hunger action team meeting today. Yes. And which is a constant discussion mm -hmm. of undernourished, under, under uh, uh, fed mm -hmm. uh, kids and adults here. Right, right. And you, what came out of that meeting that you that was either new to you or new that's on besides we need to keep right. working hard on well, it? Well, the Hunger Action Team, they're a group of coalitions, local coalitions that come together. And basically it is an ongoing discussion on how to battle hunger um, locally as well as how to create a healthier city. Mm. And so I, I think it's another one of those topics that's unfortunately across the board. It's, it's something that we don't have a single solution to, but mm. they are coming up with a couple different programs and initiatives to help with, with the ongoing issue. And uh, it's just, I mean, it, it's always nice to see people get together and actually come up with um, programs that are implemented. Because oftentimes we see sure. these great ideas that sound great in theory, but they're never implemented. Um, but they do have a lot of ongoing ones, a lot of um, pilot programs that they're working on as well. It was also my first meeting today. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're all over the board. There's a lot in of firsts. Job. There's a lot of firsts, but, but it was, I mean, it's nice to see that there are all these people that really care. And, and that's what we need as a community. And, and what they do in that organization, I know, mm -hmm. is uh, anything from mobile, uh, mobile distribution exactly. to filling uh, pantries around town mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to just making sure that, uh, that they get as much food as they can right. and distribute it as efficiently as they can. Right. Especially now since they have, in most of the schools, and I know in New Britain, is that there, it's a hundred, it's a hundred percent breakfast and lunch, yes. and a lot of families totally depend on that right, right. to be able to get. And I think that there is even some dinner uh, uh, distribution too. Right. So we talk every we come off of summer and we come off vacations mm -hmm. and say, you know, what are the kids, what are the families going to do when school's out? Right. And it, that's not something that most uh, and most. Uh, areas, including New Britain, mm -hmm. have had to deal with long term. Right. But it's getting to be long term here now. Right. And I think they, they do have a big picture um, program that they're hoping to start off. I think they're they're kind of doing outreaching now to see if there's interest. But they do want to create a food policy commission. Oh, wow. So to get a subcommittee of people get together and the point is to see the big picture, create some structural changes to the city and to battle hunger and to create a healthier city kind of a commission. And so they're asking for people's interest and opinions and comments over the next couple months, I believe, and to determine whether or not it's feasible. For well, Britain. hopefully we're going to get more volunteers for that, too. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we've already run out of time. Oh. But I know we're going to have you back, and we'll talk about the results of the election next Sounds time. Sounds good. Yeah. Catherine, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you for being with us this week. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Central Connecticut Now. We hope that you'll have a wonderful week wonderful time until we get together again to talk about the issues that involve our region and the rest of central Connecticut.